In the fall of 2016, we had so much rain that our entire street flooded. Not only our street, but our basement. And this was not our first flood. Since then, we have moved, but the storms have not let up. This summer, our area had more terrible flooding, followed up the next day with tornadoes. Thankfully, we did not flood, but a tornado did pass in front of our house. Miraculously, we had no damage. I'm Anna. And I'm Ralph. And it's fair to say we're rather concerned about flooding. And we're taking steps to help prevent it. When Anna and I built our current home, we had the plumbers install redundancy for the sump pit. The main sump pump is a one third horsepower Liberty pump that can discharge 36 gallons per minute at 10 feet. There is also a battery backup secondary pump. Now this pump works when the primary pump has no power or fails. This pump is smaller, so it can only do about 30 gallons per minute. And finally, if all else fails, there is a third water powered backup pump that will do about 16 gallons per minute when your water PSI is 60. After this last storm, I purchased an EcoFlow Delta II power supply to help power my main sump pump if there ever is a power outage. This unit has a one kilowatt battery capacity and can handle 1800 watts of output and it has a maximum surge of 2700 watts. You can also purchase an extra battery to bring the total battery capacity to three kilowatts per hour. Now all this information is important because it needs to support the power requirements of the sump pump. My pump's primary motor uses 115 volts at 5.2 amps and has a maximum draw of eight amps. Now doing some math, we get 598 watts and a max of 920 watts, which can be handled easily by the Delta II. Now I need to build a shelf to keep things off the ground. Because the sump pump's in this location, I pretty much have this empty corner. I can build a shelf here and then put the EcoFlow on top of it so I can keep it off the floor. I decided to build my shelf using ordinary two by fours. This way it keeps with the look of the unfinished basement. My shelf was going to be 18 inches by 32 inches. So I cut two pieces at 32 inches and three pieces at 15 inches. To fasten all the parts together with a clean look, I placed pocket holes with a Craig jig. Finding the center helped me to accurately place my center brace. And when you're too lazy to get your hammer, you use your palm as a poor alternative. To help support this shelf, I cut two 2x4s for brackets, both 25 inches long, with angled ends. I cut all the pieces, I assembled and built the platform for the shelf. Now I'm just gonna attach it to the wall. I first determined that I wanted the height of the shelf at three feet and marked off a level line on both walls. With Anna's help, I secured the shelf to the wall studs and then attached the brackets. And 
finally, I had to do the mandatory weight test. Yesterday, I finished installing my shelf and I wanted to finish off the top here, something a bit nicer. So I went to my local Habitat for Humanity store and I picked up this vinyl flooring. I already cut it to fit size and I'm gonna install it. Oh yeah, and because it's a little thin, I did add some extra supports here for it. With our emergency battery power added to our sump pump system, we now feel a little more at ease that if the power ever goes out or one of our sump pumps ever fails, that this redundancy we have will keep our basement dry. Thank you for watching, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to support our channel. Smile. A real smile. <laughs> that a fake smile? We have our sump pump over here. <clears throat> I hate that here. Take number two. That could be good. <laughs> I have all this empty space over here. <laughs> See, it's like a. Uh...